What's up guys, Das here. So yet again, another green day in the stock market today. S&P 500 up 42 points, up about 1.4%. The Dow Jones up over 500 points, 2.05% in the green with the NASDAQ up half a percent, 50 bucks, lagging behind the major markets, kind of like it did yesterday, but still a very solid day overall. And in this video, we're going to talk more about the markets, breaking down some technicals, and I also want to share my opinions around whether or not the stock market can go back to all-time highs. Again, we'll break down some technicals, and I also want to talk about the top stocks I'm looking to trade right now. What am I actually buying in the stock market in the middle of June in 2020? So if you guys enjoy the video, as always, hit that like button, consider subscribing, and check out all the free links down below in the description if you want two free stocks with Webull, and if you want to be further connected with the Strive Smart Discord chat and Facebook group. Again, all of that is linked down below. So let's go back to the S&P 500 and bear with me, guys. I am on my hot spot right now. So if my thinkorswim is a bit laggy, that is why. We just had a very big storm over here. Um, my power is actually out and I'm actually running on 81% um, laptop. So we have a uh, battery. So we kind of have to make this video uh, a bit quicker than normal. So let's bang it out. So S&P 500 again up $42 up about 1.4%. If we're taking a look at the technicals here, we've already talked about how 3020 that's a major support. We already knocked that level out, right? Um, we held it, we we pushed up, we actually broke 3070, which is a level we talked about yesterday and in previous days, right? Because 3070 was a resistance towards the end of May and on the 1st or rather the 2nd, uh, actually the 1st and the 2nd of June. So we broke out of uh, 3020, we held that, broke out of 3070, and now, guys, we broke out of 3120, which, again, we've been talking about these levels across all of the videos, well, at least the recent videos here on the channel, right? So, very strong day for the bulls today, obviously, right? Massive day in the markets, and we can see that we actually not only, you know, not only did we break 3120, and we hit 3130, we actually uh, held 3120 as a support heading into the close. So really at this point, everything is going um, for the bulls, right? Everything, you know, at least what the technicals are telling me is, uh, you know, in the bulls favor. And here goes um, the S&P lagging. Uh, but yeah, at this point, we are at 3120 resistance. And over these next couple of days, I'm not sure if we're going to just pop up and fill the gap all the way to 3200, which is the next resistance. Quite honestly, I don't see that happening because we already are extremely overbought, but I could actually see a bit of a pull down a retest at 3080, 3070 maybe, and then a push back up and ultimately a break above 3120. That's at, at least now, that's kind of what I'm thinking, right? And another thing that could happen is if we get a, a bigger pull down, maybe back down to this um, 50 SMA on this four hour chart, that could also be healthy. Maybe at around 2970 to about 3000, that could be a pretty healthy pull down because again, we are a bit heated here in the markets, but you know, with how things have been moving green day after green day, um, I wouldn't be really surprised if we did just pop up into the $3,150, $3,200 level. But overall, very bullish. Um, you know, these technicals are looking very bullish on the S&P 500 and away. And how far are we from all time highs at this point? We're about 8% away from all time highs. And a lot of the, uh, the chatter here with the market is obviously how the CV is going to impact future quarters because we got EPS revenue for many, you know, all the big companies for the first quarter. And that was arguably the, 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 um, you know, the quarter that wasn't impacted as much. The quarter that was impacted a lot more is the quarter that we're going to get results for in the next couple of weeks. So in my opinion, the markets are obviously relying, not relying, but they're kind of waiting. Not that they're waiting because the markets are running, but they're anticipating, that's a better way to put it, they're anticipating earnings from these major companies for the next quarter because, again, the next quarter is going to show the, uh, the, uh, the you know, the, the, uh, the damage from the CV because the uh, the months of what was it you know April March and a little bit of May they're all going to be in this next quarter so what the the markets are kind of looking out for is 
the 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 next couple of quarters of damage for um the uh the CV and what it does to these companies and that could ultimately drag down the markets so that could be a bear case at this point right but Again, with all the stimulus and the optimism with the economy opening, there's obviously a bull case that we're going right back to all-time highs. So we're about 8% away from all-time highs on the S&P 500. Going over here to the Dow Jones, you guys can see with today's price action, we broke out of 25,800. Big resistance we've been talking about. Very strong day for the bulls here on the Dow Jones. Obviously, as it did the best out of the three major indexes. And at this point, next week, resistance I'm watching is around $27,000, $26,900. Um, with one or two more strong green days, guys, we're going to be there, right? That's only about 2 2.5% higher from where we are at this point. But just like the S&P, we are a bit overheated. Watch for a pull down maybe to 25800 And if we get a bigger pull down like the S&P pulling to, let's say, 3000 um, the Dow could end up going, let's say, $24,800, $25,000, which could be a healthy pull down of around 4 to 5% from where we are um, at this point. And take a look at what the markets have done, guys, when it got recently over the uh, the past couple of weeks as we've been recovering. Look at what the markets have done as they got overheated. They, ha they have pulled down multiple times, right? One time here, the Dow went from 22.5 to about 2,800. That's a 6, 7% pull down. It pulled down from about 24.5, 6 to about 23,000. That was another 6% pull down. So I wouldn't be surprised if we did see a pull down. But ultimately, and obviously, like I said before, this is heavily reliant on the up coming quarters of earnings, guidance, and how things recover and reopen. Um, ultimately, I think even if we pull down, we could end up seeing an all-time high on the Dow Jones, um, which could be around, or it is at this point, around 8 to 10% away from where we are now. But wait and see how close the NASDAQ is to all-time highs, guys. It's unbelievable. The NASDAQ almost hit an all-time high today. It was almost right at it. 93, or rather 97.36 is the all-time high price here on the NASDAQ. NASDAQ about 300 points shy from 10,000 bucks and take a look at where we are right now 9704 um, right around that all-time high it's just unbelievable if you were to tell me yes yeah, Stas a couple you know a week couple weeks ago if you were like hey Stas yeah in a couple months or weeks the, the NASDAQ's going to be at 10k I would have been like come on man what Kool-Aid are you sipping but it's clearly happening right before our eyes. And at this point, all-time highs will happen in the NASDAQ. I'm 95% certain, as most of you guys are. Literally, any any push up of 20, 20 points, 50 points, 60 points at this point, it's going to get us to all-time highs. So for tomorrow and the next week, guys, watch for 9700, 9730 in specific to break. At that point, we could be going 98, 99, heck, even 10,000 here on the NASDAQ. But like I said on the S&P and the Dow, this could see a healthy pull down. I don't know if we're going to get it tomorrow, next week, the, the week after, who knows. But this could see a healthy pull down. If it fails at 97.30, maybe down to about 93.80, maybe 9,400, right at this 50 SMA support. And it's not a massive pull down by any means, but it would be a little pull down of about 3 to 3.5%. Three so overall, the markets, guys, are absolutely ripping it. If you have money in the market at this point, if you're in the uh, S&P, whatever, if you own in individual stocks, you're most likely doing very, very well. And with the markets going up, gold is actually getting crushed. So I personally cut out of GDX today just to... Just to just to take about a 2-3% loss and uh, wait for re-entry, guys, because we saw a massive pull down in gold today, and it makes sense, right? Going back to what I said, as the economy is reopening, businesses are reopening, we're getting optimism out there, more people are taking money away from gold, which is a safe haven asset. People flood to that when they're scared. They're taking their money out of that and putting it 
into stocks because stocks obviously they're not considered really a safe haven for many people but they recover quicker in an economic recovery so people are taking money out of gold putting it into the stock market as we're seeing that pop in the stock market and that's bringing down the gold stocks gdx gold miners etf today um, closed under 33 dollars and went down about four percent down a dollar 30 and you guys know i was in this one mid 34s um about 34 40 3450 and this morning guys when i saw the uh the big drop at open you know we actually were downtrending pre-market you know i saw that and i was like ah eh, it's not looking too good and once we failed breaking out of the uh, moving averages on this intraday chart and we started dumping aggressively um to the 32s i just ended up cutting out where was it ah, i think it was about like 33 25 is where i ended up cutting out and ultimately if you guys look it was roughly um it was a bigger loss than i normally take it, i said two three percent it was more actually about 3.4 percent uh but ultimately I have exposure to GDX call options. Again, I've been saying on the channel, $40 calls that expire in September. So I figured, let me just cut my swing position, open up some capital. I already have exposure if this thing turns up and rips back up. Just because I'm selling, guys, doesn't mean I'm bearish on gold and gold stocks. I just kind of want to free up some capital um, in the short term here. And the trend is obviously not looking too hot um, in the short term. So I figured, let me cut out GDX, let me free up some capital. And that's exactly what I ended up doing, just taking a little 3.4% loss. And you guys also know that I'm in Tesla, ticker symbol TSLA. I bought yesterday um, at about $880 per share. I'm still holding onto those shares as I do have a price target around $930 to $940, where I do want to unload those shares. And with today's price action, guys, we saw some straight consolidation. We held about $880. 885 into the close, which has been a support over the past two days of trading. So tomorrow I'm looking to see a break up into the 890s, 900s. Let's say we break under 870, 860. I'll probably cut losses at that point. Uh, but overall, I'm swinging Tesla. I feel comfortable about that. And I am also in Virgin Galactic, as many of you guys know, which had a pretty solid day today, up about 4%, up 60 cents. So overall, guys, those are the stocks that I'm involved with. Took a little loss there on uh, GDX as gold completely pooped the bed today, guys. Um, you know, and, and overall, SPCE holding up nicely. The trend, uh, the uptrend, it's looking like it's holding. But again, we're in this wedge. We're squeezing into it. So we're either going to pick this direction Obviously, as indicated by this arrow, if we break 19, 18, 19, or, or we're, we'll pick the downwards direction, which it, it, it'll happen um, if we break $16, $15. And at that point, I'll probably be cutting um, SPCE. But overall, guys, I believe in this company long, long term and as a swing trade. So I'm not really looking to cut out of it unless we get some major drop overall. So let me know down below in the comments, as always, what are your thoughts on the market? Uh, what stocks have you been trading? I love talking to you guys in the comments as always. So we had some massive movers today. Boeing, guys, um, and that's just my dog back there. If you hear any barking, hey, Ibiza, say hi to the guy. Say hi. She's, she's creeping over here, guys. Her name's Ibiza. I actually just got her um, about a week ago. Wow, and she's been such a great dog. Uh, but anyway, let's just get back to Boeing. BA up 13% today, up $20. And, you know, this is unbelievable. Ever since we've broken the wedge here on BA, this thing has been a bullish beast, right? We've turned, we, we ripped on the dime, right? You know, this thing went from 125, broke 145. We filled the entire gap up now to 185. We sold off to the mid-170s now. And mind you, 185 is actually where we rallied to after the, uh, the recovery rally, at least for Boeing here, right after the bottom, after the big crash crash in March. Uh, Boeing went from 90 to a buck 85 here. So at this point, it's arguably overbought. I mean, it is the RSI is screaming above at least at almost 80 at this point. So 
Are we going to break 185? That's what I'm watching for tomorrow. But honestly, I think we're going to see some selling. We're going to see some profit taking. Um, so watch Boeing come back mid 160s, low 170s. Um, you know, looking at a swing trade opportunity in the 170s could be an option here. Honestly, more more like the 160s. I take that back. 160s. If we get a pull down, we hold 158, 160. That could be a great opportunity here um, for Boeing, at least in the short term, as the trend is obviously um, just just showing a lot of momentum at this point. And banks, you guys see my banking stocks watch list here. Let's just run through some banks. You know, Goldman Sachs today did pretty well, up 3.15 percent. Um, Bank of America up about four and a half percent today. J.P. Morgan, probably my favorite banking stock. Stock um, up five and a half percent, pretty solid day. Up five dollars and thirty cents today. Wells Fargo up five point two percent, up a dollar forty three, and Morgan Stanley up about three percent, up a dollar thirty three. So banking stocks are obviously looking um, pretty strong here. They've been looking strong ever since the bottom um, of the market, and that's kind of it's it's kind of interesting because we have the central bank situation at this point. We're at zero rates, which that's not good for banks. But at the same time, we're recovering. The economy is kind of bouncing back. Um, we're seeing businesses reopening, which that that is a good sign for the, uh, the banks. So we have this double whammy at this point. But ultimately, I'm not touching the banks. You guys know I actually cut out of my Wells Fargo position, redeployed that capital into another long-term investment in my long-term account. So ultimately, I'm just watching the banks. If anything, I'll swing trade them, maybe day trade them. Uh, but long term long term buying at this point I'm personally just staying away I see potential in other places and another one I'm looking at is CGC here canopy growth we obviously know it took a big dump after earnings 23 bucks down to about 16 bucks but if we zoom in a bit here you guys notice how we're holding 1580 16 bucks pretty strong support here um, and ultimately I'm looking to see guys 1730 1750 is that gonna break that's kind of where I'm gonna set on the alert um, for CGC. If we start to see upwards momentum into the 17s, that's where I'd personally like to buy it because you guys see it's struggling a bit um, under this EMA on this four hour chart. So just watch for that pop above EMA, push into 17s. Um, there could be a lot of momentum there for CGC. It could potentially even fill the gap up, maybe not to 23 bucks, but into the 19s, 20s. I can see that happening. And another retail giant here, Target, arguably one of the biggest beneficiaries from the whole CV. It's sad to say, but many of these companies, guys, they did very well. As the mom and pop shops they had to close down the big corporations they were open and uh they were making a killing right like walmart target costco uh the list goes on target today up 2.4 percent up three dollars nearly and we got a big bullish move right we actually seems it seems like the trend's bottoming out at 115 we're uh breaking moving average resistances now we had a big update today so for tomorrow i'm looking at 122 obviously we closed right at that resistance from the 29th of this month, but I'm thinking if we break 122, 127, 128 is going to be the price target, right? Which at this point, judging on the charts, that gives us about a 4 to 5% potential for profit. So watch out for Target tomorrow, guys. It's looking pretty solid. And again, in this environment, um, Target's doing very well. But then again, businesses are reopening. These mom and pop shops are slowly reopening. But you have to realize in many parts of the United States, there's still a big lockdown, right? So Target... Walmart, Costco, these big companies are still seeing a, a huge influx of customers and uh, they're doing very well, it's needless to say. And we already went over Tesla. This is another one on my list here. Uh, but of course, I'm watching Tesla, a, a potential break into the $900 level. And would you take a look at NEO stock today, guys? If this is able to load NEO stock, Chinese electric vehicle company, what happens today? a big thing happened. Goldman Sachs ended up upgrading the stock to a buy. And although we take analyst estimates with a grain of salt, right? We don't just buy a stock based off of an analyst estimate. That's kind of stupid. Uh, but 
it, it, it really influxes the price or it influences the price of the stock, whether you like it or not, right? You can see if 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 a comp era if an analyst, let's say, is bearish on especially for small small cap companies like Neo, right? If an analyst is bearish, it could really hurt the stock. Although, you know, again, rational investors don't look at analysts and analyst opinion too much, but it they do at the end of the day, um, influence re most retail investors. Uh, but, you know, if, if a, a small cap stock gets a bullish analyst, that's just absolutely incredible, right? I mean, it, it's going to push the stock up a lot. It's going to push maybe institutional money that hasn't been in the stock. You know, it might push some more money in, more retail investors see a big bank like Goldman Sachs. Oh my God, it's a buy. They go and buy. So just keep an eye on NEO. It's not loading here, guys, but it was up about 20%. And again, I'm on my hot spot right now. There's a storm here in New Jersey. My power is still out. But if you guys go look at NEO's chart, you'll see it's a massive spike up. Um, again, 20%. It was up 80 cents. And for a stock that's $4, $5, guys, 80 cents is um, absolutely incredible. And a lot of other stocks that did very well today. Let's see if this one loads. Um, the, the gaming stocks. Win Resorts did very well today. It was up, um, I think it was like up 10% from my memory. Let me pull up my Yahoo Finance app. It was up about, you know, to $90. I think it closed above. Let me pull up WYNM. Um, either way, it was up about 10%. And another group of stocks from my memory that did very poorly were uh, the video game stocks. ATVI, Activision Blizzard, Electronic Arts, those uh, saw a pretty significant pull down. So maybe watch those for potential um, recovery play. And I'm looking here on my app to see any other movers that we can talk about. And uh, yeah, we see, you know, again, gold didn't do too well today. Natural gas did a little, uh, it did well. You guys was up about 5.5%. Oh, Square up four and a half percent today. Um, that's another one worth watching here, up four dollars per share. Um, but either way, guys, those are the main stocks that I'm watching. My thoughts on the markets in general, and here you see the delayed data at the top. Um, yeah, my internet at this point is screwed, guys. Uh, so yeah, if you enjoyed the video, that's pretty much it. Hit that like button, I would really appreciate that. Maybe consider subscribing if you want to see further content like this. And again, if you you want two free stocks from Webull, that's linked down below in the description box. All you have to do is deposit $100 into the account and the two free stocks, they're, uh, they're valued up to $1,400. So go get them. Link down below in the description. I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. And oh, there goes Thinkorswim coming back right at the end of the video. But either way, guys, I'll catch you all. Stay safe as always. Peace out.